was for me. I mean, it just didn't do anything. I was anticipating a lot more. It might sound harsh, but, uh, you know, I think the result and everything just did not sit well with me. Matt, what was your uh, sum up of this and, and rating? Well, you know, usually I always have faith in WWE. I'm always, like, looking to the future. If there's something I don't like going on one month, I think next month might be better. But now I've got real doubts. The thing is going to take. Like, Michael Cole at one point said that um, Braun Strowman had not been pinned or submitted his whole time in the WWE, like, since he's joined up there. And I was, I, I was not trying to think in my head of a time when that had happened, and I, I think it was ringing a bell, and I was like, okay, you could be corrected. And then it, it totally led me to think of TNA with, with EC3, with his undefeated streak, and how they, when he was pinned finally by Mike Bennett, that was a big deal, and it got Mike Bennett across big time. Yeah. This did nothing for Roman. You know, when this match did nothing for Roman, everyone knows who Roman is, everybody knows that he's the powerhouse player to take on anyone. It felt like such a waste and such like a ruined opportunity for Braun's future. So, yeah, this is definite two-star city here. Mm -hmm. And awful, awful decision to actually just chuck away a streak like that. Yeah, both enjoyed that result. Um, That's for sure. Uh, Not. Foley meets with uh, Joe backstage and tells him to not get involved in the main event or there will be hell to pay. Uh, That little segment. Uh, Matt, next up is the Raw Women's Championship match between um, the champion Bailey up against Charlotte Flair. And um, I don't know. <laughs> I got to say, I did not. Uh, you know, these two, I, like, I love both these two. They're great. Um, you know, and so good u- uniquely on their own. But, you know, again, this, this stems back from Raw... Uh, the match where Bailey won, I kind of felt like they pulled the trigger way too early on that. Like that moment should have been on WrestleMania, and uh, I'm coming out of this one, Matt, and I'm saying exactly the same. That <laughs> how on earth have they cocked this one up so bad? And you know, honestly, did they not ever learn? Like we just had one streak break with Braun. All of a sudden, we're going into another one. Um, so the only, you know, really cool thing going currently. I mean, already Charlotte. It already seems to me like Bailey doesn't really fit that belt anyway because I'm. I still think Charlotte is the most dominating person there. In fact, maybe on the entire roster currently, she's the most legit person uh, who carries herself. And I'm just really not believing this that much, Matt. Um, and the whole. The whole way it's been done has been a lot of a joke. This match, I mean, it wasn't awful, but I don't know. It just wasn't the the usual thing I was used to seeing, especially from Charlotte. And it just, there was definitely something missing. And and then when I saw the result of this match, I just couldn't believe it. I I thought, if anything, okay, they, they maybe go to a no contest. So they protect Bailey, so she's still the champion. But uh, Charlotte doesn't get pinned on a pay-per-view type of thing. So she's still got her, her thing intact. Now, surely that would have been better to protect both and then head towards the biggest stage of them all, which is only in one month's time. You're telling me you couldn't hold off a month and you had this thrown on. So already we've seen Bailey win the belt for the first time. Now she's defeated Charlotte Street. You know, the whole thing between Charlotte and Sasha looks absolutely ridiculous, by the way, now. What a waste of time uh, Sasha must be thinking, like, you know, behind the scenes thinking, well, okay, I've given all myself losing that many times to have this Charlotte streak. Well, what was what was it all for, really? Uh, Matt, am I over-exaggerating here, or, or is this... Uh, how did you feel about this match? Because, um, I, I, you know, I don't think it was terrible, but it, it, it wasn't the ending... Having this match so soon at Fastlane in general, I, I didn't like it. Um, what did what did you think about this Matt, The uh, the match itself. You got that spot on there. You know, like for me though, the, the wrestling wasn't the problem. I, I was enjoying the match itself. Mm-hmm. I was enjoying everything about it up until, like, even at the beginning, like before the match like started, and Charlotte told you know like um, what was her name? 
Dana Brooke, yeah. She yeah. told her to go away, didn't she? Told yeah, her to leave yeah. Her to it. And I thought, okay, that's good. You know, we're going to get a proper fair match. And then it turns out, you can twist this so many ways. You know, if if Jesse Ventura was, like, commentating oh. this match, he'd be telling you, like, how cheating and how, like, what manipulating conspirators, you know, Sasha yeah. and Bailey yeah, are. Bring back Jesse. Yeah. Sasha came out and got in a tussle, which by anybody's standards should be a complete disqualification, mm-hmm. you know. So that was one thing to lead to another. But it just is so, so badly fought out to me. Like you said, they just given up the streak and they didn't need to do that. Having that coming into WrestleMania would have been another bonus coming in there that they could have actually harped on about and said, you know, can any of these fr- three other women, if they do do a fatal four-way, break this streak? Um, so that would have been something good to see. Yeah. But now, the way I'm looking at it, it's really taken the shine off of any match, any women's match coming into WrestleMania. Like, whoever like is involved in fighting Bailey, I don't really feel like I could really care that much about it anymore because mm. there's nothing to lose. That, that belt's been passed around so much lately, it doesn't be hold much prestige. And now Charlotte's lost her streak. There's no prestige there. It's like, what prestige are they trying to like say that they're giving us here um it's, it's so so confusing to me why they have done this i i can't say i enjoyed it in the least and was i the only one at the end when um when sasha got in the ring and you know and she was raising like baby's hand was I only one screaming at the tv hit her hit bailey do it <laughs> yeah do well it. i was expecting that oh, i was expecting it um but you know by then i was already shocked man dude they have they have they have taken out and ruined any story now going to WrestleMania. Like they really have. Like the best possible scenario going into this now was maybe not even like if I had it my way, first and foremost, Bailey wouldn't have even won that belt um then. And we would have got to WrestleMania. And listen, if we had to go fatal four way, that would have been perfect because you could have had Bailey winning the title, but she she pins Sasha or something, um, and then that gets those two on a little bit of a, a road. But at the same time, you protect Charlotte because she wasn't the one that was pinned, and you you do a good job of protecting everybody that way. You could have had Nia Jax be the dominating one in in, in that match if you wanted. Um, I feel like whoever is doing this had they they've really confused the hell out of me. I expected if anything, okay, like Bailey's the champion. They go to a no contest here, and then the story is Charlotte's got to fend off three girls at WrestleMania. How is she going to do that? The odds are stacked against her. Um, and then maybe you have, like I said earlier, you have Bailey in that fatal four way scenario pinning somebody else, not Charlotte. So you still keep that going on. And, you know, I would have liked to have seen Bailey kind of pin Sasha or something, so it sets those two up. But the way they've done this now. Honestly, I don't know what they're thinking because they after after WrestleMania they have nothing unless they they now need um, Oscar to come up. But even that is not going to be enough to to keep fresh ideas going. And in, in fact, we we can pretty much write that match off, Matt. About the streak versus streak, that's not happening. Cool, cross that one off immediately now because that, that's well out the window, isn't it? I was looking forward to that. I thought that could be SummerSlam right there. Well, not going to be now. Because uh, WWE have again pulled the trigger way, way too early. Um, As they have done a lot of the the things. This this road to WrestleMania, they have almost given us WrestleMania moments before we've got to WrestleMania, in my opinion. Um, That that includes Bray Wyatt winning the belt, by the way, which we've had to wait so long for. And yet he's won it at Elimination Chamber. Not exactly the most brilliant of places to do that on. and yeah, I, I really do feel like a lot of these things have been done way too early um, for my likings. This match, two and a half, um, because uh, I, I just, you know, listen, I could be proved wrong and maybe a couple of weeks I feel differently about it. But from where I'm sitting now, this is a two and a half because I just don't see much uh, gain out of this um, for Charlotte. And I, I do really do. I mean, I like Bailey more than I do Charlotte in a lot of ways. I'm more of a fan. But... Mate, honestly, Charlotte had something going there, um, and even even everyone could see that. So I really feel she's uh, that is not protecting your best, um, <clears throat> you know, your most credible <coughs> credible champion at all. Uh, Matt, your sum up. Yeah, <laughs> it's really terrible. Um, 
I, yeah, it has to be a two and a half for me as well. You know, the wrestling was not the problem at all. It's just this whole situation going into WrestleMania. Where they're <coughs> looking at they're looking at WrestleMania like the be all end all. They're giving it all. They're giving us everything up just to lead towards this one night. And then I'm so worried that after once WrestleMania is done, they're gonna have no ideas and nowhere to go because it just kind of really feels like they're painting themselves into a corner lately. Mm. So and they may very well have some brilliant plans for WrestleMania, but I'm I'm doubting it, and I'm I'm not excited to see them. <laughs> and that's not what they want. Someone like me, a hardcore wrestling fan, I've never missed it ever. And, you know, and, that, and I'm getting really pushed out of it here by these constant bad decisions. Yeah, so two and a half stars. Yeah. Yeah, not good for business. This one, that's for sure. Not good for business at all. Um, you know, regardless of them throwing that statement out every time. Bad for business, in my opinion, on this one, a hundred percent. Uh, Matt, before we move on to our illustrious main event, because I know we're gonna have lots to <laughs> get to. You know, I know, I know you've got a lot of notes written down for that one, so I better let you take your time on that one there. Um, whilst Matt gets his breath and ready to anticipate what was a such a, a long, detailed match that he'll have to give us on his analysis, uh, it's now time to get in our mood, try and give us an uplift with uh, the WrestleMania week on the Wrestling Skull Podcast. Uh, yes, we will have eight full days, eight episodes in eight days, uh, which will include our original episode on the Monday. We're also going to have the Wrestling Skull podcast presentation of the 1997 20-back uh, WrestleMania. We also have a Magnificent Seven, uh, Wrestling Arts, the Hall of, Fame, Hall of Fame preview, the NXT preview, uh, the WrestleMania preview, uh, and uh, of course that includes the review and a special interview that week. All that and more, we hope you join us that week for a very busy week for WrestleMania uh, week. Yep, Matt, we've uh, we just got a nice, you know, nice little theme, got a little bit buzzed. Uh, I thought we'd get that in before we talk about this because I don't know I'd have the um, <laughs> I don't know I'd have the enthusiasm to say all that after what we're about to speak about. But uh, yeah, Matt's got a huge detailed analysis now, haven't you, Matt? Um, okay, WWE Universal Championship match: Kevin Owens, the uh, the reigning champion. He's he's had it since Finn Balor got injured. Uh, up against Goldberg, and uh, what a match! Owens takes uh, takes a, a you know. Powder before the bell, and um, you know, heckle the fans, teased around the ring a few times. Then Jericho's music hits, and uh, you know, Owens is in, and uh, yeah, spear, jackhammer, done, shall we say? Uh, all of twenty-two seconds, Matt. What a uh, what a match, what a main event, and um, yeah, what did you think? Well, it's the only match of the night that's going to take us longer to talk about than actually watch. That's for sure. Um, I was kind of... I can't say I was even disappointed because I was expecting it. I knew he would he would not have the stamina to last at all. It's still been over 12 years since Goldberg has had a decent match. Um, you know, I'm still waiting for it. Um, I don't know what he's done since he's been back. All about seven moves, all about two and a half minutes in the ring and... You know, it's not really impressive enough. And to give him the title, you know, just before Mania, I'm I'm desperate to see Batista come back and take the title if this is going to be the case, you know. I remember I was talking about when Batista came back at the Rumble and went into WrestleMania, you know, and we was kind of not happy about it. But, man, that's ten times better than what we've got right now. Mm. With like, right now we've got a guy who, as far as I'm concerned, he has done no more than what any other person could do in that ring. He's like, he has, well, it also takes a lot of strength to do a jackhammer, but you can still end the match in 22 seconds. You know, anyone could do that if the, if the other person's effectively told to lie down for him, which poor old Kevin Owens has, has had to take the brunt of. You know, we're putting all that effort in. He's had a long, long title run now, Kevin Owens, and this is one awful way to actually put that to bed. And, you know, the way Michael Cole was talking about this when Goldberg had won the title, he's it, made it totally sound like Goldberg's walked into WrestleMania with the belt. Let's not even question the fact that Owens might want a rematch. That's an afterthought now. So that's even forgotten mm. about, you know. So we know straight away that he ain't ever really reclaimed that title because they're going to have to fight for Jericho's title, the mid-class title. Mm. And, you know, Brock versus Goldberg, they don't need a title. 
title on it. It's just so, so terrible these days that they think this is something that the fans want to see. I mean, I'm, I'm sure Goldberg has his fans, but there's a time and a place for everything. And during, like, if 